Good evening, folks. It's Diamond with the Oppenheimer Ranch Project, Magnetic Reversal News, Sacred Geography, and Shinrin Yoku, bringing you a grand solar minimum update Sunday, July 2nd, around 8.45 p.m. Mountain Time, 2023. An X flare just shot off of active region 3354 as it is turning around the limb, as predicted in the last podcast we did on space weather. And good news, this was an impulsive solar flare. There is no significant CME headed our way. The big story is the 4th of July forecast and a severe storm threat to focus on I-85 and I-95. Where will Mother Nature set off thunderous booms on the 4th? Stay tuned and keep calm. It's boom time. Here are... Your severe thunderstorm threats Tuesday afternoon through Tuesday night. Hail, flash flood risk, isolated tornadoes, damaging wind gusts, 60 to 70 mile per hour winds with maximum gusts to 90, according to AccuWeather. From Scott's Bluff to Omaha up to Sioux Falls in Nebraska, you're going to be in the crosshairs. But this severe weather threat extends somewhat all the way to the Great Lakes. Minneapolis, Denver could be involved. So heads up Tuesday through Tuesday night. Tuesday through Tuesday evening, severe thunderstorms also on the East Coast from Jackson, Asheville, Atlanta, Virginia Beach, and Charleston. Heads up, Mid-Atlantic and inland. There could be some severe flooding downpours, hail, damaging winds, and gusts up to 60, 70, maybe 85 miles per hour. Now, the 4th of July forecast for the country. It's going to be smoky up in the Northern Plains, but... It is also going to be rainy for most of that region, Billings down through Denver, and a huge area of rain in the southeast. It will be exceptionally warm in Kansas City and Chicago, L.A., San Francisco, and El Paso, so please stay hydrated. Could be stormy up in New England as well. And here is the fireworks weather forecast. Good would be the dark region. So it will be good in Pennsylvania, Philadelphia, western New York. It will also be good in most of the west for fireworks. The rest of the country could be under haze, but there is that drought we have to worry about. I hope there's no fireworks displays in Nebraska or Kansas, as there is exceptional drought left in the U.S. in the center of the country. Take a look at where the exceptional drought used to be in the west here. There is no drought. Yet the mainstream media and the climate change alarmists are not talking about the amazing recovery of our planet Earth, are they now? Chicago officials reverse the flow of the Detroit River. Is that even possible? Well, that's actually the Chicago River. And they reverse the flow to go into Lake Michigan because of flooding from heavy rain. It's good news that they have that under control. July 4th weekend, severe weather threat shifts east after deadly storms tear across the Midwest. We just showed you those maps. As U.S. air quality levels slowly improve following a brutal smoke-filled week. Here is the smoke map. And this smoke map is just for the next 48 hours. But you can see the smoke and the haze dissipating over the 4th of July weekend. That's good news as we head into next week. It looks like the weather pattern is shifting and the winds are blowing north. Full forecast. Excessive heat continues for parts of the U.S. Risk of severe storms from the Tennessee Valley to the Mid-Atlantic. Dangerously hot weather continues for portions of the southeast Gulf Coast, southwest and interior sections of California, northward into Oregon. Meanwhile, severe thunderstorms and heavy rainfall will affect parts of the Tennessee and Ohio valleys, mid-Atlantic and northeast through tonight. Air quality will gradually improve across the Great Lakes and northeast, and there is a cold front dipping down into the U.S. that will, well, chill the lower 48. Here we are on the 4th of July, and you can see that huge bulge of exceptionally cold, lower, 16 degrees below normal, moving down into the U.S. This will be July 4th, into the 5th, into the 6th. So it's going to be a huge cool down here for most of the U.S., 7th and into the 8th. Look at that, all the way to the East Coast. So it is going to, temperatures will moderate after, starting on the 4th through the 8th, for most of the country, including the West Coast, take a look at July 8th for California, much below normal. Good news in the summer forecast. Seismic update, no quakes of note. We did have 
A 3.8 near Malibu that shook some pants. A slight uptick up here in the Aleutians. And some major quakes in Tonga, including a 6.9, which there was no tsunami warning. So we have an inland quake here in China. No, this is in Russia, 4.8. But overall, all is looking seismically swell. Now, Yellowstone supervolcano magma chamber has far more melted rock than thought. But that doesn't mean it's going to erupt. Scientists have worked out the consistency of the magma under the Yellowstone caldera using seismic waves. And the reservoir is filled with mush that doesn't pose an imminent eruption threat. So good news from Yellowstone as we move over to the Worldwide Volcano News Update. Sabancaya Volcano to 22,000 feet. Popo to 22,000 as well. We also have Ducono, Mayon, and Sangay. Sangay. Ducono to 7,000 here. And this is the last 24 hours. Fuego, Popo, Manapi, Shivalush. Ubinus, sporadic puffs to 21,000. Shivalush to 12,000. Fuego to 17. Piton de la Fornes. There is a new fissure there. Let's see if we can get a view of that. Take a look at that. The, the effusive eruption at the volcano continues in La Réunion. Now, there is some seismic activity here on the Reykjanes Peninsula that is raising eyebrows. Another eruption could be imminent here as we have a close eye also on Ostia. Hasn't erupted since the 1900s. My bad, that's actually Kotla Volcano that has seen the uptick here, and it is continuing. We've just had now, a, just moments ago, a larger than three magnitude happening at Kotla. So we had a seismic swarm here three days ago. It was slightly petering off, but is continuing now with increased activity. If this volcano erupts at Kotla, it hasn't erupted since the early 1900s. It will be quite a spectacular eruption, VEI-4 or greater, and it could be, well, it could be spectacular. Now, what happens when these large volcanoes go off in Iceland? You might've heard me say this in the last three years that the Reykjanes Ridge also erupts. And what's happening on the peninsula right now? There is an uptick in seismicity. So we may have a one-two punch coming from Iceland with Katla uh, erupting at the same time as the Reykjanes Peninsula. So stay tuned for more updates as we bring you over to Space Weather News. And you can see that X-flare there impulsive now dropping off down into the sea range. It is expected there is no coronal mass ejection that will affect Earth in any way, which is keeping the geomagnetic forecast calm. But there was an X1.08 solar flare peaking at 2314 UTC today, just moments ago from that departing land. As we predicted, the Earth-facing quiet would end, and then shortly thereafter we would get an M or an X flare, and certainly we did get that X flare. Here is a better picture of that and the telemetry to the left. Now, the only thing that really this created was a strong R3 level radio blackout, which did not affect, obviously, Africa or South America, but the rest of the world. So, good news coming from the sun. And we'll link you below, as we do with all of the articles, every single podcast, with this paper coming out on 4th of May, Space Weather Effects on Critical Infrastructure. Now, this is really good way to bone up on what may happen if we get a large Carrington-like solar flare that is headed towards Earth. And we will do a full expose over at Magnetic Reversal News, maybe tomorrow night. We're headed out uh, for a trip on the 4th of July uh, in an event in Crestone, so I'll be on the road for the next three days. Mars Helicopter Ingenuity phones home, finally breaking a 63-day silence and what was potentially the loss of billions of dollars. Rugged terrain had kept Ingenuity from communicating with its robotic partner, the Perseverance rover. Here's a per uh, photograph probably from Earth, but they claim it's from the Perseverance rover of the Martian surface. I am, that is a joke. Ingenuity got in touch with its handlers on June 28th via its robotic partner, the Perseverance rover, NASA officials announced today, June 30th. It was the first such communication since April 26th when the 4-pound, 1.8-kilogram chopper went dark towards the end of its 50-second flight on the floor of Mars. And good news, 
the science is not lost and we still have a helicopter flying around Mars. Can you believe that? Well, I don't believe in climate change, but a new paper coming out that we're going to be doing another expose on the Phanerozoic climate with some of the greatest people we like to talk about, including Heinrich Svensmark and many others. Uh, where are the authors on this paper? Yeah, Nir Shaviv. Uh, well, I guess he's the main author. But what he's been doing is work on cosmic rays and climate, and this is an incredible correlation here. In figure three, the Phanerozoic average global temperature plotted are the geochemical lithologic reconstructions from certain papers and combined geochemical lithologic reconstructions from other papers. Now what you get there is a cosmic ray flux line here in blue and the temperature reconstruction delta T and degrees C here for the last 500 million years. And there is a direct correlation between cosmic rays and temperature on Earth, where increased cosmic rays are actually inverse here. They're lower, and lower cosmic rays are up here. So when we have low cosmic rays, we have high temperatures on Earth. When we have high cosmic rays down here, we have low temperatures on Earth like today. And in fact, some of the lowest temperatures in all of Earth's history, and we're worried about a few degrees of warming. Shut up, Al! Get in your hole! Can't stand him. Now, if you're wondering if Antarctica is boiling like many of the articles coming out today show, it is absolutely freezing in Antarctica. This is a place you don't want to go. There's only like one day it might be above zero. That's it. The rest, the average temperature in Antarctica is minus 17.4 degrees C. That is absolutely below zero. Climate groups accept millions from charities linked to fossil fuel investments. Well, what did you think was going on? Follow the money. Some of the world's best known climate campaign groups have taken millions of dollars in donations from foundations run by billionaire hedge fund bosses whose investments funds have invested most of their money in fossil fuel companies. Can you believe that? They actually want to make money? Yeah, because the earth runs on fossil fuels. White House report signals openness to manipulating sunlight to prevent climate change. Now, I don't know about you, but if you think the White House knows anything about the climate or science, you got a long way to go. And the fact that they are agreeing and open to manipulating sunlight to prevent climate change could be the dumbest decision on earth. I think the planet is going to burn soon from the inside out <laughs> and not from the sun, if you catch my drift. Now, if you watch some charlatans like Dark Strong and his newest compilation, how all the Grand Solar Minimum people are complete lunatics and the sun is stronger than it's ever been, well, they're the lunatics. The newest data with the smoothed Sunspot data and solar cycle comparison shows that solar cycle 25 is still weaker than 24. In fact, still in the four weakest cycles in over 170 years. Yeah, those are the facts. So Dark Strong or Dr. Strong, whatever the hell you want to be called because you're a complete charlatan and I don't know where you got your degree, but I would love to have you on the show and stick my <whistles> right up your... July's supermoon will be 14,000 miles closer to Earth than a typical full moon event. You know what that means? It's a super full moon boom. The first of four supermoons to rise in 2023, July's lunar display will appear to be brighter and larger in the night sky than any other full moon event that has occurred this year. The full moon will rise on Monday, July 3rd and wreak peak illumination below the horizon at 7.39 a.m. ET, according to the Old Farmer's Almanac. Local weather conditions allowing, you can view this celestial event by looking to the southeast after the sun sets. Now, the beautiful thing is the moon will be visible during fireworks displays. So, happy 4th of July. And here's the exclusive. Have you been drink, drinking Diet Coke? I hope not. 
Almost 12 years ago today, a surgeon approached me at the March Against Monsanto, which I helped organize worldwide in 2011, the first of such. And he said he had a gallbladder in a tube that he wanted to show me, and I almost threw up. He said he did a laparoscopy, a laparoscopy in his own kitchen to remove his gallbladder because he's, he'd been drinking Diet Coke for decades and had gallstones or bladder st- or something in his thing. And it was because of the aspartame. And in fact, the aspartame builds a small nugget inside of your gallbladder and then causes cancer or uh, abscess and secretion and causes gallbladder disease. He said it's all because of the Diet Coke, and he knew it, but they wouldn't let him keep his gallbladder unless he removed it himself in his kitchen, which another surgeon was happy to do after a few cognacs. That is insane. And that story, that was in 2011. And now, in 2023, we now know that aspartame, which is in all diet products, diet sodas, causes cancer. And if you didn't listen to my story, you now know it causes gallbladder disease. So there is that. New study reveals a simple act could stave off two leading causes of death among adults. And it doesn't need to be that complicated. Yeah, this is like sudden cardiac arrest or uh, anything else that will kill you immediately. You know what those, the simple act is? Yeah, getting out and doing activity. Do something. Go take a walk. Go run around the block. A recent study published in the British Journal of Sports Medicine found as little as 75 minutes a week. That's an hour and 15 minutes, for goodness sakes, of running around and getting your heart rate up will substantially lower the risk of you from dying. So why are you still sitting here watching this video? Get out there and do something like Leah and I are doing for the next three days. We're headed to Crestone for the 4th of July celebration, freedom and unity. I've been working 24 hours a day for the last two days. It's going to be another two more days of 24 hours a day and three more days of that to pull all this off. We're going to have an awesome tent. We're going to be selling Leah's jewelry and my Damascus knives to the public as well as giving away free medicine to all those that show up to the event. Happy 4th of July. If it wasn't for the United States, we wouldn't have freedom of speech. We wouldn't have, well, as many guns as we have here. And that's a boom to knowledge. Hope you got something out of the video. Please share this video and join us at Crestone for a fantastic celebration of our freedom and unity. Become a Patreon, support the work we do, and watch all of our videos commercial free. We love you. Be safe, and we'll see you in Crestone. Mm.